this? Yeah. You're not ready for this. So I, I don't think I you will ever. Give me the three, two, one, and then hit me. Three, two, one. With over 200 fishing exhibitor booths and over 3,000 hours of fishing education, the Greater Niagara Fishing and Outdoor Expo is the largest freshwater fishing show in New York State and among the largest fishing shows anywhere in the Great Lakes. The core of the show is built around providing sport fishing education to all attendees in order to grow the sport of fishing. The Greater Niagara Fishing and Outdoor Expo highlights the rich waters of Western New York, which offers up to anglers one of the most productive and diversified year-round freshwater fisheries on the planet. You need to change your state of mind to make every hour feel like happy hour. It's time for a quest experience. This is Captain Ken from Bayside Boats. We are the exclusive dealer for quest pontoons covering Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and the Finger Lakes region. Quest understands that passion for water that drives boaters like you to get out there on the water. They have created a line of unique pontoon boats available with special options, added comfort, and exceptional quality to meet the needs and budgets of every boating enthusiast. However you enjoy the water, whether it be adventure, excitement, or just relaxing with family and friends, from sunrise to sunset, Quest Pontoons has you covered. Jerry Snyder of Dandy Eyes Chartering Services is the first charter captain to own an Angler Quest in the state of New York. Angler Quest by Apex Marine is an exclusively designed pontoon boat for the serious fisherman who also wants a boat to entertain, ski, relax, and enjoy lake life with family. Okay, here we up are on the front of this Angler Quest pontoon boat. And we know a lot, a lot of people love still fishing with a uh, big planer mast, trolling big planer boards out to the side so you can attach your line and baits to them. So we've gone right up here on the nose of this boat. And as you can see, we've got a plate here. Uh, this does run the, the Motor Guide T, uh, X, what, X, XI5 is XI5. running on this boat, right? So we've got a spot right next to it. We hard mount a six inch track down there. Our planer mast slides into our track. It is removable out of there. And now we can have a real nice and tall planer mast all the way at the front of this boat so we can get the maximum height and the furthest forward so that we create a nice deep V when we're running them planer boards out to the side that we're going to utilize our fishing rods back in the track on these gunnel walls going out to those tow lines. So being able to put a planer mast up in the front, take it off when we're not using it, we're using the boat for pleasure boating and, and doing other things or trailering down the road, planer mast can come off, lay inside the boat or still under a seat. So um, everybody that's looking to run a planer mast system on there, it is available and does work very, very well on a pontoon boat. So now when you guys purchase the boat and you actually want to customize it a little bit more to how you want to fish out there, whether we're fishing brown trout, salmon, walleyes, uh, any of your different species, musky fishing out there, um, the tracks give you the ability to be able to run downriggers in them, our rod holders that adjust and slide back and forth, and you can take them right out of the tracks and have a real nice adjustability system on here to add uh, a barbecue grill. There's a planer board caddy tool holder combo. We can hold our players, our planer boards, hang extra baits on these when we need them. Uh, so it just gives you the ability to really mix and match how your equipment is going to run for you on the boat uh, for the species of fish that you're going to target that day. Hey everybody, this is Captain Ken from Let's Catch Fish. We got Mr. Scott Brower from Mackey Plastics. You've been on our show. You were able yep. to make the trip out to Rochester and absolutely we, and the, the long trip from Gasport to Rochester. I like my boy Ken. Um, so Mackey Plastic is a match the hatch bait company. So what do we do? We make aquatic insects um, that that really exist in the water table. So um, when you're out there fishing, I'm going to give you a real quick tip. Take your fish, first fish you catch that day, throw it in a bucket. When you throw that fish in a bucket, look at what it spits out, both in coloration, meaning if it's, a, let's say it's a green, brown, then you'd want to go with a motor oil bait. Or if it's a red, you'd want to maybe go with a red with maybe some silver flake in it or whatever it is. But take a good look 
at whatever those fish are spitting out into your bucket because almost all fish when they go into water and they're in capture will eject what they eat. That's real information as to what you're catching, what they're eating down below, and that'll increase your catch. And then all you gotta have is some sort of a bait or a way to, let me get something real quick. You gotta have some way to look inside your pouch and take a look for if it's a brown then you'd want to pick maybe something like this if it's a clear or white bait you want to pick something like that if it's a blood worm you'd want this listen to lessons from fish not an old chubby guy like me talking to you from a trade show but take that first fish you catch that day throw it in the water let it spit out what it ate and then put it right back on the hook and i'm sure you're going to catch more fish out there so whether or not you're going to if you're going to keep fish that day you can cut the fish and do the same thing but the reality is too if you're not going to keep that fish you can simply throw it in a bucket of water it'll spit out everything it ate just like your live well when you guys are done with your boats at the end of the day and you've got some fish in there there's going to be all kinds of crud in the bottom that wasn't there before that all came out of those fish that bait connection I made with you is quite simply just figure out whatever the fish is that you're after that day. So if I'm targeting a specific species, let's say it's in the morning time, in the morning I'll start in the weeds because most fish, if they're pan fish, are going to start in the weeds because that's where they feel protected. And so they're sleeping in the weeds, so they're going to start there for that day. Then they're going to transition using the little lines in the weeds, which I call travel corridors, to get out to maybe the weed edges and look for their food. So they're going to go to a food source. They're going to take a look at that and then we want to exploit that every time we can interrupt that process. So if you look at a Google image on a, on a lake, if you pull that up on your phone, you'll be able to see those dark lines that go through there. Those are travel corridors in a lake. If you look at the dark pockets inside those weeds, those are the actual restaurant where the fish are probably eating those aquatic insects. So again, not just what do they spit out, but then where do you find those fish? So panfish are going to start in the weeds. The more aggressive fish are going to, again, you know, if you look at the attack predators, they're going to be adjacent to those um, weed lines and stuff, and they're going to be using cover to hide when they're going to go out and attack those fish. So if you're setting up tip-ups or tip-downs for those attack predators, then you start following those weed lines or those dark lines in the water that are those travel corridors because the attack fish have learned if they go into the food pocket and eat, they'll scatter those fish and the pocket doesn't fill back up for 5 or 10 or 15 minutes. What happens in a travel corridor is they can jet out, grab a fish, go right back into cover, and then there's always that constant line of fish moving back and forth trying to get from their cover where they're sleeping in the morning to where they're going to eat their meal, and then maybe they'll go out and roam around in the basin to look for more food. How do you, you know, know where all those places yeah. are without, so, you know, because you have to drill. You're... So I'll pull up a lake, and if you just pull up a Google image of any lake, and you turn on satellite for that. So I'm not sure how this will show up, but let's take a look at it. So this is the line, those travel corridors in there. If you turn your beacon on, I can walk right off this point and it will actually, Google will actually follow me right to that point. So if I'm fishing these travel corridors, these transitions off this point in this lake, or this weed edge or this hard weed edge in here as we come to this corner up in here we've got a few more weed pockets in there you can turn it on and here's the good part what we used to use what you and i grew up using was a fish map right so we would unroll a hotspot map and we would try to find that area those maps might be 20 years old this no image on google is older than 18 months that's lifetime weed growth and the better part that actually follows you. you when we're you can those... walk to that point. Fish from Martha's cottage over to Jerry's cottage over here, and that was the old way where we used to pick those spots up. Right? But know. that's only going to get you so close. The satellites that are up above us, if you're not using that technology, trust me when I tell you, I just saved you a whole lot of time and money and looking for fish. You can find those fish, and it doesn't matter what lake in the country you're going to. That's, that's a gonna nugget. Put you on fish. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's no, a nugget good, of man. gold. An average rainbow trout steel had that was caught out of Willow River today. And we're going to put down on the, the new display mat. These mats will actually help you with cleaning, things like that afterwards. But they'll also grip and hold on that they're giving away a mat afterwards. So run that knife just underneath the just underneath the gill. Slide it and just come right along. off the fish, that's the meat you really don't want to want to eat for, for 
sink because if, if there's any contamination in fish, any bad fats, that's where it's going to be. The so same thing, you grab a hold of that and you're actually pulling it down to make that cut. Hi, this is Rick Fickison from Kissed by the Sun Spice Company in Antlers, New York. We feature a full line of organic seasoning blends for cooking and grilling. They are certainly, most definitely, good for, for fish. Today we're going to be cooking fresh trout that we have here that was just cleaned and filleted at a filleting exhibit at the Niagara Frontier Fishing and Outdoor Show. And we're going to be cooking it with our Kissed by the Sun seasoned sea salt on the fish. And we're going to be using our Kissed by the Sun garlic and herb seasoning to season the butter. And from there you'll see us cook it and prepare it. All of our seasonings again are organic, gluten free, and blended right in the Amherst, New York area. And they are all fantastic for fish. Visit our site at kissbythesunspiceco.com to get more about our products. There's your base. And the, that, the fish is actually cooking in the butter that's basting in the garlic. So these two are what are in play right here. And then I'm going to do a salt free blend after that. We'll give this about two minutes on this side. Then this I got heated up in oil. I'm going to actually use this. I'm going to use our salt free blend here. There's no way to tell either. There's a good bit on here. It's almost going to serve like a, like a, uh, a batter. Here we go. We're going to let that start cooking there too. We'll put the seat. This is our Sunny Island salt free blend. Thank you. 